Hey guys, and welcome back to another online game tutorial with Python. Now, I apologize for not having posted this for the past three days, I guess, but I've actually just been working on the code for what we're about to create, and I wanted to make sure that there wasn't any massive bugs or errors so that I didn't slow us down when I was teaching you guys how to do this and walking you through the code. So like I mentioned in the last video, I'm pretty much going to be gutting everything we already did. Uh, we'll keep a little bit of it, but we're just going to really add to a bunch of that and just yeah, we're going to be gutting most of it uh, and we're actually going to be working to create online rock, paper, scissors. Now, I know this sounds like kind of a lame game, but let me show you because it's actually pretty complex. And if you can understand how to make this game, then you're going to be able to understand how to make any other kind of online game because the principles are the same in terms of sending information, waiting for players to go. Uh, and there's a lot of different things that you might not think about that we actually have to do to code something like online rock, paper, scissors. Okay, so let's, this is client number one. I'm just running another Pi game window uh, or Pi charm window with the server running on it. And you can see obviously it's a bit oversized, but it says waiting for player. Okay, so I'm gonna launch another client and then, <coughs> excuse me, you can see when I launch that, it loads both of them up into the game and it says your move, opponents, your move, opponents, and currently it's waiting. So I believe this one's player two and this one's player one. So if I make a move here on, uh, let's say rock, it'll lock in my move. It says your move is rock. And then over here, it says, obviously the opponent's move is locked in because it's like looking for this guy's move. And now if he makes a move, like let's say scissors, then it says you win, you lost, and then it just resets and you can keep playing games. Now I'm also gonna be adding more to this. This is just like the beta version. I wanted to make sure I get the tutorials out quickly to you guys. I'm gonna have wins, ties, and losses, keeping track in the top hand corner. And when you load in, you're going to be brought to a menu screen, which will allow you to like start a new game or to leave or we'll, we'll add that later as we go. But this is the main functioning game. And you can see, obviously, it's working well, tie game um, and it restarts. This also allows for unlimited amount of clients to play. So, for example, if I launch another two windows, you can see these guys now have their own game going. Um, it's kind of difficult because I can't really get four on the screen. But anyways, if I go like scissors paper that works independently of these games and these games can kind of play at their own time which is really interesting and really cool and if you disconnect one of them it automatically disconnects the pair and that's just because uh, obviously you can't play against no one right so yeah okay sweet so that's that um, let's start getting into the code and there is quite a bit of it so this is probably I'm probably just gonna code all of it in one video and then split it up into sections so if the sections are kind of like choppy in terms of i don't do an intro or an outro uh, that's why because i'm just going to code all of it and if it's too long i'll chop it up into a few videos okay so first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to code a uh, a game class okay and this is just going to be responsible for holding all the information for our game that we need so for example did player one go yet did player two go yet what move did player one make what move did player two make are both of them connected to the server information like that and you guys will see how much information we actually need it's also going to store things like keeping track of who won or who lost um, how many ties how many wins so that's what we're going to do with this game class so let's start making it so class game i'm doing this in its own file by the way um just called game you are going to need it in its own file because it's going to have to be accessed by both the client and the server okay we're going to define our initialization uh in here we're going to take id i'm going to say self dot p1 went equals false uh self dot p2 went equals false and obviously you guys know what this is going to do it's just going to stand for if player one has made a move or not if player two has made a move we're going to do self dot ready equals false uh, if i could type that correctly we're also going to add self dot id so self dot id equals id and this is just going to stand for the current game's id so each game we create is going to have its own unique numeric id so that we can determine who is like what clients are a part of what game and whatnot. Uh, we're gonna do self dot moves equals, and then we'll just do none and none in here because currently the moves are none. But we'll just store two positions so we can change that. We'll say self dot wins equals, and then zero zero. Obviously, this one is gonna stand for player one. This one's gonna stand for player two. And we'll say self dot ties equals zero. That's all we need for the init. So the next one is gonna say get underscore player underscore move. Now what this is going to do is exactly what it says is just going to get I don't know how I added that there It's just going to get the player move that we asked for so we're going to take P which is going to be either zero or one and what we're going to do is simply return self dot moves and P and just to remind ourselves we'll say that P 
is in the range of 0 and 1. So we're only going to take value 0 or 1, and then we're going to return uh, a move. So let's say move here, okay? And that's just to remind ourselves that we have to pass 0 or 1. Obviously, 0 is going to represent player 1, and 1 is going to represent player 2. Okay, next one, play. So this one's a bit more complicated, not crazy. We're going to take play, we're going to take a player, and we're going to take a move. And what this is going to do is it's simply going to update um, our moves list with that player's move. Pretty straightforward. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to say if player equals equals zero, then what we'll do is we'll say self dot moves zero equals move. Um, oh, actually, you know what? Let's do this. Sorry, I'm just looking at my other screen right now. We'll say self dot moves player equals move. But now what we have to do is based on the player, we have to update if P1 went or P2 went. Okay, so what we'll do in here is if it's player one, obviously we'll do P1 went um, equals true. Going to need a self before that. And then we'll call we'll just do a little else here because if it's not player zero, it must be player one. So we'll say self dot P2 went, if I could spell went, equals true. So that'll just keep track of if we've gone or not. Sweet. Next method, this one's really easy. It's going to be called connected. And this is just going to tell us if the two players are currently connected to the um, game. If they are, it will allow us to load in. And that's how we can determine whether we should show waiting for player or not on the screen, right? So we'll say return self dot ready. And that's just going to tell us obviously if we're ready and that'll be updated from the server side, which we'll do later. Next method define uh, both went. This is just simply going to return if both of our players went. So to do that, we're just going to say self dot P1 went and why can I not spell that word and self dot P2 went like that. Okay. Next one is winner. This one is a bit more complicated, but it's just going to keep track of where it's actually going to tell us who's won the game. So if we call this method, we're assuming that both players have gone. We're going to check their moves excuse me, against one another and see if they want. So we're actually going to have to check nine possible cases because there's three moves each player could do three times three, nine. Um, so what we'll start by doing is we'll just say P1 equals self dot moves um, zero dot upper and then zero. The reason we're doing this is because we just want to get the first letter of the move because the move is going to be stored as rock, paper or scissors, the string. And it's just going to be easier for us to type out, um, for example, R or S or what do you call it? Or P to check the moves as opposed to having to check the entire word. So we're just going to get that first letter by doing move zero. We're going to upper it and then we're going to take that first letter. We're going to do the exact same thing for P2, except obviously we're going to need. Um, oh, I don't know what I did there. We're going to need moves one dot upper. And now we can start checking to see who's won. So we're going to say to start winner is equal to negative one. Now that's because there could be no winner. There could be a tie. So if it's tied, we're going to say negative one. If uh, player one is the winner, it's going to be zero. If player two is the winner, it's going to be one. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if P1 equals equals R and P2 equals equals scissors. What we'll do is we'll say winner equals zero because player one won that. We'll say L if P1 equals equals S and P2 equals equals R. Then we'll say winner equals one, I believe. Do another LF. And I know this is tedious, but this is the way you have to check for rock, paper, scissors. I don't think there's an easier way to do it. If you know an easier way, let me know. And P2 equals equals R. And if you guys don't want to type this, you can always copy it from my website, uh, techwithtim.net. Okay, so say winner equals paper beats rock. So that'd be winner equals one or zero, sorry. We'll say elif p1 equals equals r and p2 equals equals p, then winner equals one. And we've just got two last ones to check here. So we'll say elif p1 equals equals uh, s and p2 equals equals r, and then p2 is the winner. So winner equals one. I believe that's, oh, sorry, I might have messed this up. This should be P. Think so. P rock, rock, paper, scissors, paper. Yeah. Winner equals zero. Um, okay. L if P1 equals equals paper and P2 equals equals scissors, then winner equals one. 
And I believe that should be correct. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, sweet. And then the other cases are if it's a tie. So if none of this is the case, then they must have tied. And then all we're going to do is simply return winner like that. Okay. And one very last method, then we're actually done with this class. We can move to something else is define reset went. And all this is going to do is say self dot P one went equals false and self dot P two went equals false pretty straightforward and this is the game class I know I kind of sped through this but it's pretty trivial how this works uh, we just need to get this out of the way so we can start coding some other stuff okay sweet so we've done this class um, next thing I think we want to work on is network so network actually you guys are gonna to have to modify yours to look like mine now get P and uh, what do you call it so this first half so init and get P are gonna be the same as what we had previously the only thing that's changed is connect and this send so in connect instead of um, what do you call it like unpickling an object so like pickle dot loads what we're simply doing is we're gonna just connect to the client like we did before but instead of unpickling it we're just gonna decode it so we're gonna say self dot client dot receive 2048 dot decode um, we'll return that value and that's because when we initially connect to the server what we're gonna get from the server is our player number which means we're either player zero or we're player one. Now that's important because that's going to determine where on the screen we're drawing certain things and how we're sending information back to the server and updating player one or player two, right? Because technically each player thinks that they're player one, but each one needs to be assigned either a zero or a one by the computer. So we know where to store information, right? Okay. So that's how we modify that. Just do decode instead of pickling. Um, sending, I believe is the same, except what we're going to do is instead of pickling an object to send we're simply going to send a string and we're going to load an object so that means we're going to send string data to the server and we're going to receive back object data so when we receive something we have to pickle dot loads it in but when we're sending it we just have to encode the string okay so just make sure it looks like this uh, i don't think i need to go through this we've already done this for the past two three videos and that's the network class so game and network are done um, the next things to do are server and client now server and client are a bit more complicated. So inside of server, I guess we could do this first because it doesn't really depend on the client to work where the client kind of depends on the server. We're going to change a bunch of things. So this is what it, mine looks like now. I've kind of gutted the entire threaded client. I got rid of most of the stuff, like most of the other stuff. I uh, just left this beginning thing. So the, the server IP, the port, um, the socket connecting, listening, waiting for connection. So by the way, some of you were saying you're having issues with fs.listen. You can just make this zero. It doesn't really matter um, what's in here. And some of you were saying like you're having issues. Just you can just delete it and type it in again. And apparently that works. That's what someone said. So I don't know. Don't ask me about that. But if you're running into issues, do that. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we want to make it so you can have unlimited connections at once. Now that means we're going to have to have unlimited games running at the same time so before what we were doing when we had those players moving around the screen is we were just storing like player one player two and we just had a list that had two entries that's how we were doing that what we're going to do now is we're going to have a list that contains a bunch of different games and those games actually you're sorry it's going to be a dictionary those games will be accessed by their id and you guys will see how this works um, it's a bit complicated but just follow along um and yeah, so I got to just open up my other file so I don't make any mistakes here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, connected equals set. We're just going to define some variables. We'll talk about what these do. Games equals a blank dictionary and ID count equals zero. So the reason we're adding these is games. This dictionary is going to store our games. So it's going to have an ID as a key and the game as like a game object like this. Okay, as the value. This connected is just going to store the IP addresses of the connected clients. Um, we're storing in a set just so it's easier to access later. I don't actually know if we use this. We might, um, but we'll see. Okay. ID count obviously is just going to keep track of our current ID. So that means what game we should recreate. So we don't override games and say like two games have the same ID because obviously we can't have that happening. Okay, so that's fine for that. We're not going to deal with anything in threaded client right now. We're going to go down to our while loop. And this is where we're going to create new games based on new people joining or possibly delete games. Uh, actually, we'll delete games from threaded client. 
So what we're going to do right now is when someone connects this, this runs, right? And we run a new, so like once we accept a connection, everything after this runs. So what we're going to do is we're going to say ID count plus equals one. If you notice me looking away, I'm just looking at my other screen to make sure I don't make any mistakes on this. Now what ID count plus equals one is going to do obviously is it's going to keep track of how many people are connected to the, um, the server at once. Cause obviously, right? Like once this happens, we accept, then we go down the while loop, we start a new thread and then we wait for another connection. So we're just going to keep track of that. What we're going to do is we're going to say P equals zero, just standing for the current player. And we're going to say game ID equals, and this is going to be weird, but just follow along with me. Uh, what do you call it? ID count minus one integer division two. Now what this is going to do is essentially every two people that connect to the server, we're going to increment game ID by one. And what game ID is going to be, or we'll say it's, yeah, we'll add it by one. What game ID is going to do is keep track of what ID our game is going to be. So like, for example, if we have 10 people connected to the server, we're going to have five games, right? So that's what this line of code is doing for us. It's keeping track of how many games or if we need to add a new game. Because obviously if we have like six people connected, all of them are going to be playing each other. A seventh person connects. Well, it doesn't have a game to join. We have to create a new game for it to join. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so what we'll do next, is we'll say if ID count modulus two equals equals one. And what this is going to stand for is if you're going to be player one or player two. And if this happens is actually we need to create a new game because this means that we don't have a pair for our new player. So for example, like say this number is three, that means two people are already playing. So that's one person just connected. So we need to create a new game. That's what this modulus two is getting. Okay. So to do that, we're going to say games, game ID equals game, game ID. Okay. And I believe this actually has to be capital. So obviously, uh, sorry, at the beginning of this, I forgot to mention, I imported game. So from game import game, that is important. And yeah, essentially what we're doing is we're just going to say that um, game ID, which is that key in our dictionary is now equal to a new game. So we can access that and add players to it and whatnot. Sweet. So that works. Let's actually print out a message here and just say creating a new game dot dot dot, just so that in our server, we get some kind of output and we can have a look at that if something's going wrong. So otherwise, if there, we don't need to create a new game, meaning we have, let's say three people are connected so that second game already exists and another person connects. Well, that person has to be a part of this new game. So what we're going to do then is we're going to say games game ID dot ready equals true. Now what this means is that the second player connected. So there's two players now connected to our game. So now we can say that that game is ready to start playing because both the players are connected. So that means that they can, well, obviously play against each other, right? So that's what we'll do. We'll set that dot ready equal to true. And obviously we're storing all the games on the server side as opposed to on the client side. And then what we're going to say is we're going to say P equals one. And what this means is player equals one. And you'll see why we need to do this in a second. Okay. So now we're going to do start new thread. Oh, 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 oh,